Using geometry nodes, a volumetric lighting and an HDRI trick, we can create a realistic aurora in Blender, which will allow us to draw it in anywhere in our scene where we want. Super cool, yet very easy to do. So let's get started. All right, so I've opened up a new blend file here and we are going to start off by just hitting A and X and deleting everything in our default scene. Add in a curve object, so shift A and choose curve Bezier type and tap into it and hit A, X and delete all the vertices in this curve. Now let's use the draw tool, which is on the left here, numpad seven to go into top view here and then just draw in any curve that you want. All right, so this will be our basic curve, which we'll start working with. If you don't do this from the top view, you might get something like like this, which goes up and down instead of just being a flat line. So let's take our curve object into geometry nodes here. And first of all, what we want to do is we want to flatten out this line, like I said. So we are going to use a transform node for this and basically tell Blender, okay, whatever the input is, just flatten it out on the Z axis or the Z skill in this case to zero and just flatten it out like that. So now you see all of these lines are completely flat. Even if I draw in a new one, something like that, it will just flatten it out. Now, I do advise you to draw in the Aurora from the top view. However, if you don't, you will make sure that it still functions as intended. Now, I want to clean up this node down here. So in the geometry nodes window, I'm gonna select the transform node and then hit control H. This will hide all unused sockets, which is fine for this specific scenario. Now, the first thing we want to do is we wanna take these curves and we want to resample them. Take a resample curve node, which I'm gonna leave on 10. All right, so we have our single line here with the resample curve node. So it's now made up of 10 points, which gives it sort of a jagged edge here. And we can fix this by actually setting the spline type. So first of all, let's go for the set spline type node, plug that in between. Let's set it to Bezier and then take a set handle and plug it in between as well. It's set to auto, which is fine because it will automatically generate these nice smooth settings. So we now have a smooth line consisting of only 10 points. What we want to do next is we want to animate this line sort of wiggling. We are going to take the usual suspect for this, which is the set position node, which will allow us to translate this object in certain directions. And if we plug in a texture, and in this case, we'll use a wave texture, and we plug that into the offset, you will see that we now get a displacement along the line here. And if I change the face offset, this is working perfectly fine. I do want to change some settings here though. So I'm going to set the skill to two, get a slightly bigger motion. I think that's a little bit more natural since these in the real world are very, very huge areas of light. So and the largest skill will give it a little bit more uh, realism. That's about all we need to change for the wave texture. Now I'm gonna add in a scene time node, which I'm gonna plug into the face offset here. Now what this will do is it will effectively animate our line for us when we play back our animation. Now I like this and I also want some control over it. So I'm just gonna add in a math node, plug it in between, set it to divide here. And if we set it to one, we'll just get the default value here. If we set it lower, we'll get faster. And if we set it higher, we'll get slower. This is just a simple control for us. I'm just gonna leave it at default for now. What you'll also notice is if you go into front view is that our line is now moving on the Z axis. I'm not entirely sure how auroras work in real life, but what I've noticed is that they don't seem to move up or down really. In this case, I wanna specify the axis on which this is working. And as always, we'll use a combined XYZ node for that. So I'm just gonna plug that in between and take the color into the X and Y, which will make sure that we don't see any movement on our Z axis. So it's completely flat still, but over here, we do get a little bit of movement on the other axes. Now I wanna exaggerate the movement on the Y here. So I'm gonna add in another math node, plug it into the Y connector there, set it to multiply and give it like a value of three, which will just make the movement a bit more exaggerated on the Y axis, which I think looks pretty, pretty cool. Now I do think this overall is a bit fast. So I'm gonna set the divide node to two and yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. All right, so we now have an animating line and we can just draw in more of these. So if I draw two more over here and just play that back, it still works procedurally. We can change the amount of distortion we're getting. We can change the speed. So lots of stuff that we can control. And obviously this is why we use geometry nodes. We can control the settings and we can draw them in wherever we want. So we now have these three lines, but they are still curves. There's no actual geometry to work with and we'll need geometry for our volumetric lighting to work. Down here, I'm gonna set a curve to mesh node, which will allow us to turn these into meshes. And for the actual profile curve, I'm gonna use this node called a quadrilateral 
quadrilateral quad that's really hard word to say so quadrilateral i guess and <laughs> just plug that in there and now we get these uh i don't know square snake like things and uh it's it's getting somewhere so i'm just gonna set the width down to something like a 0.5 which will make it a bit thinner and for the height i'm gonna go for something like a 10 and i'm gonna enable fill caps to make sure that the endpoints here are closed off all right next up i want to add in a subdivision service to round things off so I'll just plug that in between and set the amount to two here and we should be getting a nice smooth rounded off effect there uh, which i think looks a bit more natural uh, especially when we start adding in our shader here talking about the shader let's add a set material node like that in between and we'll use the default material which i'm just going to rename to aurora so it's now the selected material for our bezier curve object and we have a set material with the proper material selected final thing that i want to do here is i want to get a bit of differentiation in the overall height so in this area here what i want is a bit more of this going on so how can we do this? Well, simply put, we can use a curve radius node. So if we look up a curve radius node, plug that in there and we'll change this value. You'll see that something is going on and it's actually changing the overall height of this thing. So now if we take a random value node and we plug that in there and we set this to be one, which is fine and set the minimum to be about 0.5, we get a nice bit of differentiation. All right, so that wraps up the node tree and I'm just gonna glance over it real quick. We'll start off with the group input, which is just the curve that we're drawing then we flatten this using this transform node set to zero we resample the curve to 10 points we set the spline type to bezier and give it a automatic handle type which will make it nice and smooth use the set position node to change the overall position with the input of a wave texture which gets fed through a multiply node on the y-axis so it's a bit stronger on the y and then plugged into the x as well combine xyz and we'll use a scene time node to actually drive the phase offset which will animate it for we then plug it into a set curve radius node to control the overall height of each of these elements give it a random value so it's nice and random for each of these lines and take that final curve and plug it into a curved mesh node with a quadrilateral which will serve as our blocky object here take that into a subdivision surface to make it a little bit smoother and rounder especially on the bottom and top there and finally give it the proper material with that said let's take this thing into shading so in shading before we start working on our volumetric lighting material we are first going to start off on creating our hdri we are currently in ev which is the default of course in blender which i'm just going to switch to cycles let's enable gpu compute for our device here and set the noise threshold to 0.5 or so and that's all we need to do for the settings there now let's change our object here to world so we can actually tweak our world here and with our background selected let's hit Control t this will add in a environment texture node a mapping node and a texture coordinate node now we can choose an hdri and we are going to use two in this case i will put links in the description to both of these so you can get them they are free let's add in our default hdri which is from uh, polyhaven and it's called evening road 01 so let's take that in here and this is what we'll use for our clouds mainly now you'll also see trees in here which is not something you want to see so we are going to change the z location in this mapping node to be about 0.1 which will lower the entire thing down so if i drastically increase this to one and i look down somewhere over there yeah so this is the ground it's just very very stretched out to the bottom now that's a bit too much so point one will do just fine we take that over here and we want to make this hdri a little bit darker and this is actually a nice trick because you can control your hdris you don't have to just stick with the default hdri that you download from the internet so plug in a use saturation node and i'm going to take the saturation down to about 0.6 just make things a little bit less saturated and i'm going to take the value down to 0.5 make things a little bit darker now i'm going to take a mix rgb node and combine this together with another environment texture so i'm just going to duplicate this texture over here plug it into to the top socket there and open up this starry night desert again links in the description so let's do that over here set the factor to one and let's set the mix node here to be where is it yeah there it is multiply so what we're getting right now is we are getting the starry night desert which on its own looks like this 
And we are combining that with our evening road and especially using the white parts here, which are the clouds. And this gives us pretty natural look. I mean, the stars shine through a bit too much, but overall, I don't think this is too bad for combining just two HDRIs with a minimum amount of work. Now I am going to set the overall background strength to be about 0.5 as well. And that's looking good to me. We want to add in our volumetric material. So let's change this back from world to object. And with our Aurora object selected, let's go ahead and delete our principled BSDF material. Now I'm going to take an emission shader and we are going to plug this into the volume. This will immediately result in nice volumetric lighting for our object. Now with our emission node here, I'm gonna take a noise texture, which will drive the color. So with the noise texture selected, let's take the factor here, drag and release the mouse and look for a color ramp and it will automatically connect it. Now let's connect the color ramp to the emission shader here and let's just crank these two up, something like that. And there you have it. We now get some noise on our stuff here. So our noise is still a bit too big here. So I'm gonna take the skill of the noise to 50 and I'm gonna hit control T to get the mapping and texture coordinate nodes. So just a small in between here. If you don't get these mapping and texture coordinate nodes when you hit control T, that's a node wrangler add-on feature. So if you go to preferences into add-ons, you look up node wrangler and there it is. Just enable that and it will allow you to do these types of things. So just for preview sake, I'm going to hit control shift and click on the color ramp so I can get the color ramp in the viewer node, which will just make it a little bit more visible for now. And what I want to do is I want to scale all of these noise dots along the Z axis. So giving it a scale of zero on the Z axis will make sure that these lines are all going up straight like that. We might need a few more. So let's go for a hundred or so. Now, what we want to do next is we want to combine this with a gradient going from the bottom to the top here. This is how an Aurora looks in uh, real life. And you'll notice that at the bottom part, especially the light is way more defined, way stronger than it's up here. So let's make sure that we do the same here. And we'll do that by adding in another color ramp with, in this case, a gradient, like I said, going up and down. So I'm just gonna duplicate all four of these nodes, reset the skill there. And for now, let's put this into the viewer. Now let's select our noise texture and let's hit Shift S. Now what Shift S does, it will allow you to replace a node uh, in between all of your node trees. So that's a very convenient shortcut to know. I'm just gonna go to texture, gradient texture, and voila, I will just place it in there. Now let's reset our color ramp to be the complete normal. We can also just click here and choose reset color ramp. And that seems to work, but we want it to go from down to top there. So I'm gonna take the Y rotation and set it to 90. Go here and flip the color ramp because we want the black part to be up top here. We can just drag this in a little bit, drag this out a little bit, and I'm just gonna add two more stops. First one, I'm gonna drag all the way to the left. I'm gonna make it black as well. And this middle one, I'm gonna give a sort of semi-dark gray color. And let's just drag all of these in until we get a nice fade. Now I'm going to set the interpolation from linear to B-spline just to get a more gradual fade here. Maybe drag this guy in a little bit more. Final thing though, this white value over here, I'm just gonna set it to be 10 or so, which will make it stronger. Well, actually maybe that's a bit too strong. Let's set it to five. Now what we wanna do next is we want to combine these two. So this is the original noise that we have here and we wanna mix this together with the other gradient that we have over here. So we're not going to use the actual mix function in this case, we're going to use the multiply function. And this will make sure that we get both of these uh, together. So that's looking pretty, pretty good. I might just drag this in a little bit more, something like that. And actually let's change the value for this one as well. Just make a little bit stronger, something like that, five. And that seems to be looking pretty, pretty good. The final thing that we need to do is give it some color. So in this case, I'm not going to use this as the color input, but I'm just going to use it as the strength input, which shouldn't change anything because the color just remains white and the strength just tells some parts to be non emissive and other parts to be emissive. So the end result looks the same. But if we now take another color ramp and we take the color here from the multiply mix RGB node and we plug this into the color for the emission, we should be able to change that. Over here, I'm going to go to white and I'm going to go to some sort of bluish value, something like that. And on the right side here, 
I'm gonna go to a more green value, something like that. Now I'm gonna change the RGB value here to be HSV, which will give a more colorful transition between the two. It will just give you the full color spectrum. So I'm just gonna delete this middle one here. All right, so that's the entire effect basically done. Now let's start making everything look nice. I'm going to add in a plane object here and just scale it up. And I think I'm gonna go for something like a 200 here. Just hit Control A and apply the scale. And now let's hit new. And in here, let's set the transmission to be one. Let's set the roughness to be zero and we'll create a basic water shader. Take a bump node, plug it into the normal there and let's take a noise texture. There it is. And let's plug that into the height. And I'm gonna set the strength to be 0.1 and I want the scale to be about 500. Now let's take our Aurora object and let's go to the transform here. So in the object properties, let's go to transform. Let's just take something like a 20 here. Just move it up until it's nice and up there in our sky. I'm gonna get close to the water here, shift A, and I'm gonna look up a camera. Meanwhile, let's move on over to layout. So we just have a bit more space to work with. Let's look for our Aurora object there. And I think I'm gonna go for something like this. All right, so now we sort of have the right angle and I'm gonna hit control alt zero to align our camera to our current view. Here's what the real magic Magic, uh, is in this case I'm not going to use a normal camera but I'm going to use a panoramic camera I'm going to use the fish eye equisolid I'm just going to set the field of view here to be 360 so it's complete circle there complete sphere I should say and let's set this overall thing here to be about 12 or so the lens all right, so this is how it looks. I do think I might want to change the overall camera a little bit. So I'm just gonna move to the side here and then rotate it until I get a different angle, which I'm happy with. Yeah, I kind of like this one. Now I do still see a tree here. So let's go back into shading real quick, into world there. And let's take this and set it to 0.2 instead of 0.1. We should take care of that. So let's go back into layout. Let's see how that looks. Yep, our tree is gone now. I'm also noticing I forgot one tiny thing in here and that's to actually set the multiply mix RGB node for our Aurora shader to something higher. So it could be one. Um, I think 0.9 is also nice just to get a little bit of glow in there and that should look a little bit better than it did before. So that's looking fine. And I'm just gonna take the camera here increase the lens actually to 15. So with everything set up correctly, we can now just draw in Aurora beams going across our scene here. So I'm just gonna go draw a few in there, sort of overlapping our camera here on the left side. So there is our camera. And we this way we can just make sure that they are nice and within our scene actually. So something like that, maybe just a couple more further back. Now, overall, I do feel the lightness or the emission strength is a bit too weak. So I'm gonna go back into shading here. And for the strength node here, I'm just gonna add in another math node, plug it in between, set it to multiply and multiply it by a factor of 10 or so. Yeah, that's a lot better, it's a lot stronger. All right, so that's looking very, very good. The water is a bit too strong in its bump. So with the water selected, I'm just gonna take the strength here and set it to 0.01. Make it very, very nice and soft. And because we make it soft, it appears like a camera is up higher and it's further away so it makes it look bigger the scale gets bigger because the uh, dents in the water look very very soft that's everything you need to know to create auroras using geometry nodes volumetric lighting using shading and some hdri tricks with combining two hdris i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did then please leave a like and subscribe i want to point out that the project file for this video is available on my patreon so if you want to download that one or over 40 other project files that i've got on there please consider consider becoming a patron and really helps support the channel. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next one. A huge thanks to the following patrons for supporting the channel. It really helps out a lot.